economy of Saudi Arabia. The problem and solutions are the most crucial issues that I will deal with. First, circumstances of Saudi Arabia. Second, economy in Saudi Arabia and OPEC. And the problem of Saudi Arabia's economy for the last part of my presentation, the solutions of the problem will be presented. This Saudi Arabia is by the far the largest of the countries in Arabia Peninsula. Its population is over 34 million, and they are in 14th of GDP score in the world. The Saudi Arabia government provides free education and health care to its citizens. For being a welfare state, they will need a lot of money. So what is the root of all these finances? The answer of these desirable regulations is the abundance of oil. Saudi Arabia is the world's largest lending exporter of oil. Because it controls so much oil, Saudi Arabia is an international member of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. OPEC. OPEC is an international organization whose members work to influence the price of oil in the world markets by controlling the supplies. However, the system of how it works has an issue. Their economy is mainly based on oil. The problem is that the oil is a restricted resource. If they run out, their economy will fall into great confusion. The solutions of this problem are quite simple. Firstly, they can expand the tourism industry. In that way, Saudi Arabia can rely on not only oil but also a sightseeing industry. Secondly, they can develop a new level energy. It is also sustainable and environmental. Lastly, they can increase the opportunity of women's economic act. If women became economic agents, their economy will grow further. Thank you for listening. Hello, my name is Raymond. Today I'm going to talk about Israel. Do you know about Israel? Please listen carefully. First of all, we're going to talk about the history of Israel. It will be interesting. Second, I will explain the Israel's culture. Lastly, the most exciting part, Israel celebrations. Do you know that Israel is often referred to as the Holy Land? Some people call Israel the Holy Land because it is, it is home to sacred sites for three major religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. So Israel is the descendant of the Hebrew and ancestors of the Jews first, first established the Kingdom of Israel about 1000 BC. It covered roughly the same area as the modern state of Israel. In the 16 BC, the Roman Empire conquered the region which was called Judea. After several, several Jewish rebels, the Roman forced many Jews to leave the region and rename it Palestine in AD 135. This dispersal of the Jews, Jewish population is known as the Diaspora. Then, what will Israel look like today? Jews, flock, Jews from all over the world, including many who fled from Arab lands. Israel has a prime minister and a parliament known as that there are several major political parties and many smaller ones. Israel's government has built a strong military. Israel's economy is modern and diverse. Items like high technology, equipment, and cut diamonds are important equipment. Israel has increased food production by irrigating from land. Most of Israel's population lives in cities. Jerusalem, the capital, and Tel Aviv are Israel's largest cities. About 75% of Israel's population is Jewish. 
The rest of top captivity people are mostly Arab. About three fourths of Israeli Arab are Muslim, but some are Christian. Israel's Jewish population includes Jews from all parts of the world. Many Arab not knowing Hebrew, one of the Israel official language. To assist these new citizens, the government provides language classes. Israeli Arabs speak Arabic, Israel of other official language. Israeli Jewish culture is rich in holiday and special foods. For Jews, the Sabbath from sunset Friday until sundown Saturday is a holiday. Yom Kippur, a very important Jewish holiday, is celebrated in the fall. Passover in the spring celebrates the Israeli Israelis escape from captivity in ancient Egypt. About 100,000 Israeli Jews live in rural settlements. Each settlement or kibbutz is a large farm where people share everything in common. Today we learn about various things in Israel. What do you think about Israel so far? Israel has a rich history and culture from the past until present. How about learning more about Israel? Thank you for listening. Hello everyone, I'm Jaden, speaker of the topic Origins of Islam. Enjoy and you'll learn how Islam is founded. I've got three concepts for you about Islam and to Muslim culture and how Muhammad founded Islam. These chapters include various informations of Arabian Islam culture. Let's get it started. First of all, let's get into Muslim culture. Previous days, most of the Muslims used to live in a large desert land. That means the Muslims live in a region with dry air but less water. Fortunately, Arabians, Muslim, but heaven called oasis. Because oasis got of water and food, most of the Muslims live in clumps at the oasis. However, they can live there forever. So Muslims made a decision to be nomads. Before the culture was nomad, Muslims moved around to make a trade or provide food for themselves. It was too hard to walk by, to walk by their feet. The Muslims used camel to get into another place. While nomads are moving around, Arabians who stayed motivated the city to a trading marketplace. There, nomads traded animal products and herd for goods like cooking, supplies, and clothes. Win win for both Arabians. In early times, Arabians worshipped many gods. That changed, however, when a man named Muhammad brought a new religion to Arabia. During the session when Muhammad lived, his city, Mecca, became rich because of the trades. But the wealth belongs to a few. Muhammad concerned about this problem when the pill and finally got an answer from an angel. And then Muhammad told the God's teaching to Muslim and united all religions to Muslim. At the very first time, there wasn't many followers of Muhammad. But after the city of Medina invited him, his followers became huge, including Medina's people. After this situation, Islam became the, one of the most popular religions of the world. Thank you for listening to my speech.